Hi everyone and uh, very good evening to this YouTube live session. So uh, today we are going to discuss in a very short uh, time about what should you be reading in these last uh, 20 days for the upcoming INI CET exam. So I've got a list of topics that is subject wise which I want to emphasize to all of you how I would be able to help you in these next 20 days and uh, how together we can crack this exam. So before I begin can I get a quick nod if the audio and the video is good and if there's no technical glitch then we can start without any further delay yes a quick nod in the live chat box on that and let's begin right away so um, 20 days obviously the first thing that is there in your mind or this confusion that is there in everyone's mind for any subject is uh, what to st what to study and what to leave right so uh, definitely at this point of time all of you have your set of notes uh, now the first thing is I do agree that the level of the INI CET is definitely one notch above the NEET PG exam but many of you and I think many students we do have here who are taking INI INI CET as a benchmark or you know a test which will help them analyze their preparation for the NEET PG exam. So we've got both set of students those who are actually targeting INI CET and those who are considering this as a deadline to finish their most important topics and then take the leap forward to NEET PG right. So for both set of students what to study is very very obvious and that is going to be your notes right. Whichever source whichever uh, platform from where Wherever you've got your notes which you have studied throughout the year those are the notes that you have to revise again and again and again but what are the topics that you have to focus on in these 20 days very very important please remember we are targeting now not just one but we are targeting many exams under one so we don't know in terms of which way the exam is actually going to go but when you actually think of the papers that have been clubbed into one you know for sure that definitely CNS was something that was altogether a different paper and CNS is something that is asked in every central institute exam. So one thing is certain that CNS has to be paid importance to. And what are the things? So I've tried to uh, narrow down some uh, syndromes or some uh, recent updates, which I feel that all of you have to study. I'll be sharing this PDF with all of you. I just want that starting tomorrow onwards or maybe from 1st of November, preferably tomorrow, the next 20 days, you should have this particular PDF print out in front of you on your table and whenever you pick up pathology at least these should be ticked in front of you so as you keep studying these chapters these topics have to be ticked in front of you so let me tell you the most expected question is going to be the cns tumors with the 2016 classification and the updates I'll also from tomorrow, I'll be sharing all the links of the special classes that I have conducted on most of these topics that I'm putting up in front of you today. We've already discussed them on an academy. I'll give you a summary list of all those links so that whenever you get time during the day, pick up any one link in the next 20 days and watch that class. So that will be a mixture of links from an academy and YouTube. Most of the topics that I'm telling you have been conducted already. So recent updates especially genetics of medulloblastoma. I hope you know there are four new categories which you have to know. Genetics of glioblastoma, again 2016 update, very important. A new tumor that has been added, diffuse midline glioma. You have to study about diffuse midline glioma, very well expected. Meningioma, no longer you have to just know samoma bodies, you have to know its variants. Atypical meningioma, cordoid, rhabdoid, uh, talking about anaplastic meningiomas. So variants you have to know. What are the syndromes with which brain tumors are associated? So Turcot syndrome, quickly tell me which is the most common brain tumor that you see in Turcot syndrome. A quick answer on that. So I'll be taking a small viva also in between just like that as I'm enumerating the topics which is the brain tumor that you get very commonly in Turcot syndrome. So I hope you remember Turcot is a type of a FAP, familial adenomatous polyposis. And yes, medulloblastoma and glioblastoma. Perfect, guys. Medullo and glio are the ones that you get over here. Next, NF1, NF2, you know they are associated with uh, brain tumors. And we've got uh, conditions like, uh, yes, very good. M most of you have answered well. Great. So you've got all the syndromes, be it uh, tuberous sclerosis or 
all those syndromes have to be von hippel lindau syndrome so any syndrome that you have which has brain tumor is important lastly in the neurodegenerative disorders you've got alzheimers with its pathogenesis and genetics quickly enumerate the uh, names of the genes that we have in alzheimers so number 1 you know chromosome number 21 so that is why in down syndrome trisomy 21 there is premature alzheimers so chromosome 21 is important the presenilin gene is important apoe4 is important so the alzheimers genetics and pathogenesis is very very essential this is the neurodegenerative disorder that you have to focus on if you have time left very good uh, you've got that right the genes very good if you have time left then go in for other neurodegenerative disorders like uh, parkinsons and so on let me tell you i hope all of you have that pdf of the 40 tables that i have shared over the telegram group there are two tables from the chapter of cns under that which has all the different neurodegenerative disorders that table is very very important i will be taking it up like i took the previous three classes on tables i will be taking up the alzheimer's disease or the neurodegenerative disorders also because that has something known as tau protein so remember tau pithy is something that is very very important now you all have to know about tau pithy and what are the disorders that come under it that's a table in robins very much expected question yes dr akriti uh, i had thought of discussing 12 to 15 important tables but many students have written to me that you know if we could discuss all the tables it will be great so i decided to continue with that series in the coming month of november before this ini cet exam so that all your tables can be revised okay moving on coming to uh, you know this was if you were thinking from nimhan's point of view so definitely this paper will have cns if you're thinking from jipma point of view you need not worry because the previous trend of jipma was a lot of genes and genetics and chromosomes but the last two sessions the change that we've noticed in the jipmer exam is now it's become very similar to the other central institute exams with a lot of conceptual things involved in it so definitely nothing to worry when we are talking about ini cet so nothing from that point of view that you have to focus on now now let's begin with what all do you have to start your preparation with so please remember first i'm giving you a general list and then i'll go chapter wise so number 1 stains in pathology especially immunohistochemistry any central institute exam will always test you on the stains i'm also going to conduct two sessions or two mock tests uh, on uh, i'll be announcing that at the end of this session so two mock tests in the month of november with their discussions and i will be including a lot of stains in that so staining in pathology very important with ihc vacutainers all of you know color coding vacutainer one has to come every session it's mandatory no paper is complete without it color coding of vacutainers needles be it a bone marrow biopsy needle be it a true cut biopsy needle or be it say for example a uh, needle of uh, liver biopsy what is the needle for liver biopsy guys yes needle for liver biopsy anyone what is the needle that you all have to know liver biopsy needle it's the wim silver man needle wim silver man needle right so please remember these needles and their photos which we've seen a couple of times earlier they'll be there in the mock test also you have to know moving on biomedical waste bags i've added here because they don't come under any subject they have to come under every subject biomedical waste bags and their color coding similarly in surgery cannula color coding or in uh, the anesthesia gas cylinder color codings color codings are always important similarly in pathology vacutainers are very important His histopath processing remember yesterday session only i was showing you that microtome which was cutting the sections so a histopath machine a histopath uh, the microtome histopath processing is always important in the aims exam one question mandatory so quickly tell me what is the fixative what is the fixative that you would use for light microscopy what is the fixative that we'll use for light microscopy i hope everyone remembers we go in for a 10% 10% neutral buffered formalin neutral buffered formalin and what do we go in for electron microscopy we go in for a 2 to 2.5% glutaraldehyde right 
2 to 2.5 percent glutaraldehyde similarly can you tell me a fixative so you know um i know this session was only about enlisting but i think that way it becomes boring one or two questions here and there we can always discuss very good i've got the answers quickly tell me a fixative that you use for testicular biopsies yes quickly tell me a fixative that you would want to use for testicular biopsies guys i remember teaching you this in one of the unacademy sessions fixative for testicular biopsy i'm also leaking out a few questions of uh, uh, the mock test of the mock test which i'll be announcing at the end of this session bowen's fixative very good bowen's fixative is something that we use for testicular biopsy someone in between said carne see carne is no fixative carne is a complex or carne is a triad okay what maybe you wanted to say was carnoy fixative I think you wanted to say Carnoy fixative and Carnoy fixative is something that we use in karyotyping. Karyotyping. So I hope you are all clear. One of these is definitely expected. Tell me the fixative that we use in a pap smear. One more question. The fixative that we use in a pap smear, guys. Last question and then I'll show you the next topic. Okay. Fixative for a pap smear. I've taught you this earlier also and I'm going to tell you that pap smears are very important. 95% ethanol. 95% ethanol is something that we use as a fixative for the pap smear. So similarly, pap smear and FNSEs, these are very important. Have all of you seen these two videos? Let me tell you all that I've enlisted over here. Stains in pathology, we've already conducted a session. It's available on the YouTube channel. Next, going on to FNSE, we've already conducted a session. It is available on the YouTube channel. Uh, pap smear is also available on the YouTube channel. Channel, you have to study. Lastly, microscopes, which is also available on this channel. So, light microscope, electron microscope, and fluorescent microscope. I hope you know. Again, I'm telling you some questions of the mock test. Electron microscope, very, very important for the Central Institute exams. Immunofluorescence, especially immunofluorescence of number one, kidney, and number two, skin. And number three, immunity. Let me tell you, immunofluorescence of immunofluorescence of the kidney, of the skin, and I hope you've seen the immunofluorescence pattern of autoimmune disorders, anti-nuclear antibodies. So all of these, why am I giving you a list? This has to be your checklist for your preparation. Second, when I'll be giving you your mock test, I'll make all the high yielding questions from these topics which we expect. And we'll have a video discussion after that on Unacademy where I'll be telling you the answers also. Okay, now transfusion medicine. I expect one to two questions because you know that Southeast Asia edition of Robbins has a new chapter added on it and I cannot mark any one thing but everything about transfusion medicine is important be it at what temperature is it stored the bags are stored what is the shelf life what are the types of bags did you all attend the two uh, the session that we had on unacademy the almost two hour session that we had on unacademy in the beginning of this month if not it is a free session on blood banking transfusion medicine please go and view that it has all the 10th edition updates of robins these are questions you've been getting since long but these two is what i'm expecting autologous blood transfusion is something that has been added in robbins i expect a question on that afrss i expect because plasma afrss for covid recovery patients is an ongoing thing so that is important platelet afrss because dengue season is here that is also very important so afrss and autologous blood transfusion the most expected questions if you've not seen that video please do go anytime before the exam do have a look at it before the paper okay images i hope and i know many of you as i see your names images decoded has been something that all of you have been with me over these months so if if not, if you are not aware of it, on the YouTube channel, there is a separate playlist. On the YouTube channel, there is a playlist of images decoded. Chapter wise, all images are explained. If not, if you want to attend it live, in the month of November, I'm going to conduct approximately three to four classes of all the images of pathology, starting from cell injury, going up to CNS. 
all the images of path in these three to four say it, it is going to take us three to four hours easily but that way is all your images of this particular subject are done and i hope all of you know that nowadays the importance of images is utmost the number of image based questions has gone up drastically so if you know the image you can easily crack the question even without going into too much of depth of what they've written into it so if you know the image well you've you've won half the battle so yes images if you are already studying on your own refer to the images decoded if you want to study it live with me then november 3 to 4 hours i'll let you know over the telegram group i'll be conducting it somewhere in the second week close to your paper so that you have a good rapid revision moving on now coming to what you have to focus topic wise so to uh, nimhan's point of view or cns point of view we've discussed blood banking which i expect we've discussed coming to general path under cell injury it's a huge topic but please remember programmed cell death is something you'll get especially necroptosis because there are updates in necroptosis and ferroptosis necroptosis and ferroptosis is very very important expect a question right next cellular aging not only i hope you remember last to last paper also had a question on werner syndrome premature aging you will get questions on telomeres which are important so these all you have to know cellular aging and programmed cell deaths free radical injury definite especially talking about fenton's reaction an all time favorite fenton's reaction and free radical is now linked to ferroptosis so all the more important and lastly reperfusion injury either study it over here or study it in the cardiac system but reperfusion injury is important always will come as a history of a patient who had an mi or who had a stroke and on reperfusion on further reperfusion either by giving thrombolytic therapy the patient collapses so some evidence of mi is always linked to a reperfusion injury okay coming to inflammation in inflammation nowadays the clinical correlations are important disorders like lad brutons shediac higashi syndrome chronic granulomatous disorders these are very important but the most important two topics which take all the highlight is chronic inflammation with granuloma images granuloma images theory giant cells very important wound healing events everyone seen that table of wound healing events so that is something you have to revise a week before the exam and go be it in path be it in surgery this table will come also what i'm going to include in the mock test there is a new update interferonopathy interferonopathy that has interferonopathy that has come up in robins which again is important for you to know so that is precisely what this mock test is going to be about and i couldn't limit it to one i've uh, got two mock tests where i'm going to put in 50 to 60 questions each so that we can cover most of these high yielding topics but what i want from you is that we are starting that mock test will be on uh, somewhere around the 10th or 12th of november so i want till then you should have gone through all these topics talking about uh, talking about immunity, immunodeficiency disorders, especially SCID and CVID. Very important. This is an all time favorite, be it Bruton's hypogamma globulinemia or be it Viscott Aldrich syndrome, SCID, CVID, hyper IgM. Yesterday, in fact, do you remember? Hyper IgM, we were doing the flow cytometry analysis. All these immunodeficiency disorders are important if you are facing any problem again you need to log on to an academy you need to log on to my profile and there is a one hour session a free session of immunodeficiency syndromes that i've covered which i always tell students to see before the aims exam and go it is a must okay talking about tolerance central tolerance peripheral tolerance and the concept of energy must know you have to study this and go everything about amyloidosis i can't pinpoint any one everything about amyloidosis be it the type the diseases the stains the stains are important and can you all tell me let me ask you a names level question can you tell me a particular diagnostic modality that we use for knowing the extent of amyloidosis yes i've taught you this earlier also extent of amyloidosis is best known by which technique come on everyone a quick answer on that which technique and let me tell you for those who don't know about it amyloidosis youtube 
refer to YouTube, you will get a full lecture of amyloidosis of 40 minutes, start to end, cover to cover, I have covered, I have uh, completed it. No answers on that. Come on, guys, what do we do? Okay, I've got one answer from uh, Dr. Amit and that's the only answer. Why? No one else wants to attempt it. Scintigraphy. Scintigraphy is something that we do for knowing the extent of amyloidosis. Okay, scintigraphy is something that we do for knowing the extent. So uh, many of you saying X-ray crystallography. X-ray crystallography is done to know the structure of amyloid. What structure do you get on X-ray crystallography, guys? X-ray crystallography gives you the very, very um, important beta pleated sheets that is separate. So X-ray crystallography is showing you the structure. Scintigraphy is showing you the extent of amyloidosis. I have taught you this question in the amyloidosis YouTube and on Telegram on the quizzes. Please start revising those videos. That's all that you need. Two cells which I want everyone to mention. Please remember NK cells are very very important. Everything about it. What is the activating arm? What is the inhibiting arm? How do they function? Quickly tell me the interleukins which stimulate it. Tell me the interleukins which stimulate the NK cells guys. Quick answer on that. Quick answer on the interleukins. I hope you remember 2, 12, 15, primarily 2 and 15, but also 12, 2, 12, 15 for NK cells. These are the interleukins. Yes, 2 and 15 primarily. Perfect. Excellent. Many of you saying 16, 56. No, those are not interleukins. Those are markers. Markers of NK cells are CD 16 and 56. Markers of NK cells are 16 and 56. Interleukins are going to be primarily 2 and 15. Okay. T regulatory cells are important. Do you remember reading this yesterday? In the yesterday's class, I taught you about T regulatory cell. Hai na? T regulatory cell was uh, regulated by which gene? I also taught you that. T regulatory cells were by, uh, regulated by which gene? Yes, which gene? Fox P3 gene. T regulatory cells were by Fox P3 gene. So that is important. And what are the CD markers? Very good. Everyone's answering well. What are the CD markers that are there in the T regulatory cells? CD4 and CD25. 4 and 25 are there. Okay, so that is what brings us to the end. CD markers is important. Today, can you all promise me that you are going to go on my telegram group, you are going to pick up the quiz of CD markers and attempt it. Anytime today before calling it a day and before closing your books, you all will go on the telegram group, you will pick up the CD marker quiz, just search CD marker quiz. All of you will attempt that quiz because it has all the CD markers of the subject in one quiz. So you all have to attempt it. Today itself, without any delay, everyone's going to do it. Okay, moving on. What do you have to know in genetics. Now more than Mendelian, the concept has shifted to non-Mendelian disorders, especially the trinucleotide repeat disorders like fragile X etc. So trinucleotide repeat disorders and the genomic imprinting. So let me tell you, all of you keep focusing on under genomic imprinting. You please uh, focus on Pradovili and Angelman, which is very, very good. You have to focus on that. But you also have to focus on beckwith Weedman syndrome. So yes, beckwith Weedman syndrome, I had posted this up uh, some days ago. This is also a genomic imprinting disorder and any childhood uh, tumor that comes to your mind when I say beckwith Weedman syndrome, any particular childhood tumor that comes to your mind, Wilms tumor. There are many, but Wilms tumor is important. So non-Mendelian disorders are extremely, extremely important, right? Not able to find the tables PDF. It's there on the Unacademy Telegram group. It is there on my own Telegram group. It is there on my Facebook group. So I don't think it should be a problem. In case you're still facing any problem, send me a message over Telegram or Messenger and I'll forward it to you. Okay, after non-Mendelian, coming to diagnosis. Again, a session that I conducted a free class that I conducted in the beginning of this month. All the different techniques of PCR are important, be it Sanger sequencing, be it single base primer extension, be it uh, RFLP or Amplicon length analysis or be it um, 
now you had have the gwas that is also equally important if you read about it you are good to go if not don't you enter the exam without reading genetic diseases diagnosis if you don't have time i'm telling you the most important diagnosis part one hour lecture you have to see and go you're not going for the aims exam without reading this karyotype full procedure of karyotype is important starting from arrest to staining to methodology and the different karyotypes of trisomies and monosomies trisomy and monosomy not only the trisomy monosomy even the karyotype of cryduchat even the karyotype of cryduchat because that shows you what what will it show you it's a very difficult karyotype to pick up so you that's why i'm emphasizing trisomy monosomy is very simple you count and you are okay cryduchat partial deletion 5p partial deletion 5p that uh, particular uh, disorder you have to see and go you have to see and go right okay then the two most expected if you say ma'am i don't have time for all of this what should i read for the last day last day i have to finish genetics i have only 15 minutes i'll say read these two topics and go i expect one question from micro rna video available on youtube i expect one question on crispr which i will be teaching you in the month of november before your exam crispr cas9 now that it's also being used in the covid diagnosis crispr cas9 is very very important right very very important okay moving on coming to the neoplasia neoplasia is all about tables i think many of these we've discussed the table of proto oncogenes were you all a part of the table of proto oncogenes that we ca uh, carried out a few days back four days ago all those proto oncogenes very very important tumor suppressor genes tumor markers for path for medicine for surgery and paraneoplastic syndromes let me tell you in robin's 10th edition there is a new paraneoplastic syndrome that has been added that is osteomalacia so today open that pdf and see uh, i'll be posting that update tonight a new paraneoplastic syndrome has been added in that table that is osteomalacia and that is now very very important for your exam lastly there is i don't know how many of you have read it but under the neoplasia chapter there is a concept of something known as double minutes and homogeneous staining regions have all of you heard about these two have you all heard about unfortunately this is what i had to teach you yesterday in that quiz which got interrupted because of some technical issues but never mind i will be covering this double minutes and homogeneous staining regions are very very prominent in neuroblastoma they are very prominent in neuroblastoma so this is something this is something no many of you have not never mind uh, never mind i will be conducting like i said i am going to conduct two mock exams and now that i've interacted with you i exactly know what all you are not aware of so i'll emphasize more on that in the mock papers that i'm making and i will come up with a live discussion also of that mock exam so that we can finish off right so double minutes and hsr for neuroblastoma we are definitely definitely going to study if you want today at the and i can even uh, you know show you that uh, double minutes and hsr and finish off today only while leave it as a doubt let me finish the topics and we can come to that moving on now coming to systemic path under systemic path starting now you know these are the topics that you will have to club with medicine surgery and obgy so uh, let's go on starting with blood vessels for pathology vasculitis is important but the most common most important one is the anca associated so which are the three vasculitis which are anca associated micro microscopic polyangiitis you're not going to leave these microscopic polyangiitis wegener's granulomatosis and shirg strauss syndrome everyone has to and has to learn this what are the two types of anca c anca and p anca c anca and p anca their question is an all time favorite now tumors i usually don't say too much for the neat pg exam for the central institute exams i'm saying that a lot because again one notch higher angiosarcoma is something that they always ask you i hope you know the chemicals that are associated with angiosarcoma the chemicals that are associated with angiosarcoma the vat chemicals that is vinyl chloride arsenic arsenic and thorotrast right arsenic and 
Thoro trust. You have to know these. Then next, hemangiopericytoma. I hope you know the shape of the vessels in hemangiopericytoma. The shape of the vessels in hemangiopericytoma are the staghorn vessels. They are the staghorn vessels in hemangiopericytoma. And I hope you know the organism for Kaposi sarcoma that is HHV8. And also that Kaposi sarcoma is the second most common tumor in HIV. So yes, I'm just telling you some quick points about all of these. But you have to study these particular tumors in detail for the uh, upcoming INICET, especially hemangiopericytoma. So vasculitis and tumors is what you have to emphasize on. Coming to cardiac pathology, the top two are the ones which take the all the importance. Cardiomyopathy, be it dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or you have the restrictive cardiomyopathy, or I hope a variant of dilated, the broken heart one. What is the broken heart syndrome also known as? Dilated cardiomyopathy, the broken heart syndrome. What is that also known as, guys? That is also known as, yes, the it's very famously known as the broken heart syndrome. Very famously known as the broken heart syndrome. Tacot subo, yes, everyone's aware of, great. Tacot subo cardiomyopathy is something that they always like asking you. Another uh, one that they like asking you is the Naxos syndrome. A typical AIMS question. Naxos syndrome which is associated with arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, that is something that is again very very important. Let me tell you, of these, this arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy is a Gypmer favorite. If they want to go into the genetics of something, they will go into the genetics of this particular cardiomyopathy. Very good. As I see everyone answering, yes, that in Naxos syndrome, the child has woolly hair, the person has woolly hair. You are right. Okay, then the table of myocardial infarction changes. Everyone knows at what stage what happens, at how many minutes which change is happening. Always favorite. One gross stain which everyone knows that you have to know for the exam. What is the stain? Do you all know TTC? Triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride. Very, very important. This picture you have to see. In medicine and in path, cardiac enzymes. Cardiac enzymes, what appears when is again something important. Next, for the INICET, I would want all of you to, this is a part of cardiac pathology which many students ignore and they keep focusing on MI. No guys, cardiac tumors and I'm not telling you to focus on way too many. I'm telling you to focus on myxoma, rhabdomyoma, myxoma, rhabdomyoma and papillary fibroelastoma right so i'm just telling you to focus on these why because their complexes and syndromes are important like myxoma is associated with the carne complex rhabdomyoma is associated with tuberous sclerosis and who will tell me the other name for papillary fibroelastoma tell me anything you know about papillary fibroelastoma be it another name or be it the location any any information that you have about papillary fibroelastoma it is the most common heart valve tumor it is the most common heart valve tumor and it is also known as it is also known as c anemone type it is the c its appearance is like the c anemone so remember it is the c anemone type of heart tumor very good it has excrescences amazing it has excrescences so it is something very very important great are we done with this c anemone like lesions amazing guys Cardiac tumors, please do read before going for the paper. Coming to lung, read index, uh, an all-time favorite since decades. This question has been a favorite. I hope you know read index is something that will increase in chronic bronchitis, right? And it will not increase in asthma. It will not increase in asthma. These are important questions. Bronchosequestration is something you read in pediatrics, some extra tissue, uh, lung tissue that is present in the lungs or outside the lungs, bronco or you call it pulmonary sequestration. Images of asthma, the three C's, everyone remembers the three C's of asthma. I hope you remember the charcot laden crystals, the seriola bodies and the, uh, yes, third one. Charcot-laden crystal, seriola bodies and something spiral, something spiral, Kirschman, 
Everyone agrees with me? Kirschman spiral, these three photos are an all-time favorite. Okay. Coming to fibrosing lesions. Great. Everyone's got that right. Coming to fibrosing lesions. Pneumoconiosis. Each and every uh, occupation under pneumoconiosis comes to you. Especially asbestosis, you cannot ignore. Asbestos, silica and CWP. Definite ones. Asbestos, silica and CWP, definite ones. Sarcoidosis images. Sarcoidosis images, all-time favorite. Tell me the two bodies that you see in sarcoidosis. Quick answer on that. The two bodies that we see in sarcoidosis because you know why they'll give you a long history but those two images will give you the answer about sarcoidosis. So what are the two images of sarcoidosis? One, you see star-shaped bodies that is known as the asteroid bodies. And the other is known as excellent showman bodies. So you've got the asteroid bodies and you've got the showman bodies. Okay. Smoking related disorders are important. Smoking. Tell me a question. Can, uh, can LCH uh, happen in the lung? Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Yes or no? Quick take on that. Can Langerhans cell histiocytosis happen in the lung? Yes. We have something known as pulmonary LCH. Pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis. And that is something that is related to smoking. That is related to smoking. So you have to know that. Okay. Lung tumors. You say, ma'am, pick up any one and I cannot. All about lung tumors. All about lung tumors are is important. Squamous, adeno, small, large. Those are the four cancers that you know. But I'm just not focusing on cancers. I'm even telling you benign tumors. What is the most common benign tumor of the lung? What is the most common benign tumor of the lung? Guys, quickly answer on that. Pulmonary, what? Pulmonary hamartoma. I hope you all remember the most common benign tumor of the lung is a pulmonary hamartoma. You have to know this. Other than that, have you heard of uh, tumors of the Picoma family? Tumors of the Picoma family. What are the tumors of the Picoma family? The sugar tumor definite importance of the sugar tumor, picoma family. Tell me one immunohistochemical marker for the sugar tumor. All AIMS aspirants, tell me one immunohistochemical marker of the sugar tumor. I expect this. For all the students who are sitting for the exam after 20 days, I expect you to tell me the immunohistochemical marker of the picoma family of the sugar tumors. Excellent, excellent. HMB45. HMB45. So many questions of the mock exam I'm kind of leaking out to you, but only leaking out to you because uh, I want you to read by then. And then when we have a test and when we have a discussion, you know, we can have a rapid discussion and we can discuss many, many important points for your exam. So that is the reason I'm emphasizing on certain things more so that that is how you should uh, have, you know, you should prepare for the next 10 days. Okay, so not only this, in the end, cancers you'll read, adeno, squamous, I'm sure. You'll read all the azopardi effects, small cell, large cell, paraneoplastic syndromes, typical everything about cancer. But don't forget to read carcinoid. Under lung and under GIT, there's a common tumor which you have to study and that is carcinoid tumor. No escaping that carcinoid tumor and the carcinoid syndrome very important carcinoid syndrome most commonly causes right-sided heart lesions or left-sided heart lesions so sometimes you know I, I try not to ask you questions but when it comes the topic comes I feel I should give you one extra line about it so carcinoid syndrome most commonly causes right or left-sided heart lesions most commonly causes yes quickly right can I say right-sided heart lesions Right-sided heart lesions. Great. Got your answer. Left is spared. Amazing. So right-sided heart lesions like tricuspid regurgitation. Carcinoid syndrome most commonly causes right-sided heart lesions. Does it only cause right-sided heart lesions? So you never know how the pattern is. You could get a true and false question. Does it only and only cause right-sided heart lesions? No. Rarely it can also cause left-sided heart lesions. That is a possibility but more commonly causes right-sided heart lesions. Okay, great. Everyone knows that. Coming to the next, GIT. Esophagus, I think uh, for the NEAT PG exam, I would have told you achalasia cardia and I would have told you esophageal tumors. But for the AIMS and INI CET, I will emphasize a lot on esophagitis, especially the infectious ones. 
Now the infectious ones could be CMV esophagitis, herpes simplex, it could be candida. Other than the infections, I'll also focus on eosinophilic esophagitis. When a person has eosinophilic esophagitis, what is that gross appearance that we get? The gross appearance that we get in a case of eosinophilic esophagitis, a quick answer on that again. Yes, feline esophagus, feline esophagus, everyone seen? Yes, amazing. So everyone seen that esophagus which has those rings? So, you know, you also call it pseudotrachea. You also call it pseudotrachea because it has rings like tracheal rings, like tracheal rings. So, it's also known as, yes, tracheolization, pseudotrachea. Amazing. Perfect. Okay, in stomach, an all-time favorite in every paper, curling and cushing. Very, very important. Curling ulcer, cushing ulcer, extremely important. Stomach adenocarcinoma. Okay, tell me, adenocarcinoma. Under a classification, I've given you the hint also, there's a classification. It is divided into two types, that is intestinal and diffuse. Can you help me with the name of that? Can you help me with the name of that classification? It is the Lorenz classification. It is the Lorenz classification. We divide stomach into intestinal and diffuse. I would want you to tell me that uh, is there any uh, bacteria? Simple question. First year type question. Bacteria which causes stomach cancer. Bacteria which can cause stomach cancer. H. pylori. Simple. But can you tell me a virus which can cause stomach cancer? Can you help me with a virus that can cause stomach cancer? That is the actual question that I want to put up to you. A virus that can cause stomach cancer. H. pylori is simple. Na? So virus Epstein-Barr virus. Epstein-Barr virus can also cause cancers and in fact if someone asks you which is the most common which is the most common carcinoma of Epstein-Barr virus so you know whenever I ask you carcinomas everyone says ma'am Epstein-Barr virus causes nasopharyngeal carcinoma but what is the most common carcinoma that Epstein-Barr virus can cause is gastric cancer is gastric cancer which type of gastric cancer which type of gastric cancer Lymphoepithelial carcinoma. Lymphoepithelial carcinoma. Okay with everyone? So please remember bacteria is H. pylori, but lymphoepithelial carcinoma happens with EBV. Okay, you have to know stuff about maltoma. Who will tell me what is the uh, morphological feature that we get in a maltoma? The morphological feature that we get in a maltoma, guys? Yes. It's something known as LEL. Maltoma shows you LEL, lymphoepithelial lesion. Very, very important. So you have to know the lesions of maltoma. Who will tell me the translocation of maltoma? The translocation that you see in maltoma. I'm not asking you H. pylori. You know it by default. So lymphoepithelial lesions, great. Got the answer. Give me a quick on the translocation also. Translocation 11 and 18. 11, 18 for maltoma is important. Great. Intestine is something where if you want me to pick and choose, I cannot because every word of intestine for the AIMS exam, INICET exam is important. Be it malabsorption, especially an all-time favorite Whipple's disease. Whipple's disease. In Whipple's disease, which layer of the intestine shows you past positive macrophages? Which layer of the intestine shows you past positive macrophages? Lamina propria, yes. Lamina propria shows you past positive macrophages. Important. IBD, Crohn's and ulcerative, especially the genetics of Crohn's and ulcerative. Genetics and polyps. Didn't we discuss the polyps a few days back on the YouTube channel, which is important. So polyps you have to study. Okay, moving on. CNS under this list. I'm not explaining again. I've already done that. Moving on, going on to kidney. I would not enumerate the topics for kidney because I feel that I've taken two classes this month on kidney right in the beginning. If you just do those two classes, it is more than enough and there is nothing else needed nothing else needed okay amongst bone and soft tissue whatever you've read in orthopedics is good enough for pathology i'll want you to focus on the images and the table of translocation for soft tissue tumors that we studied a few days back 
I hope everyone remembers that table of translocation. Yes, so you have to study. For skin, you have to focus a lot on the cancers and the skin appendageal tumors. The skin appendageal tumors. So under skin appendageal tumors, tumors like I would want you to read pilomatrixoma. I would want you to read trichelemoma. And I would want you to read syringoma. These are a must. These are a must. Apart from that, if you get time, then you must know the cutaneous manifestation. There's a table in Robbins which I've given to you in your PDF. There's a table in Robbins which has all the cutaneous manifestations that you see in different, different uh, disorders of medicine. So that is a table I would want you to read. In the end, do it in dermat, do it in path, it's the same. But bullous disorders, bullous disorders, very, very, very important. Pemphigus, dermatitis herpetiformis, bullous pemphigoid, Haley, Haley and Darrier's disease, extremely important. If you say that, ma'am, last day I have 10 minutes for skin, what should I read? It is going to be bullous disorders. Moving on to muscle, you have to focus on two things, myositis, polymyositis, dermatomyositis and inclusion body myositis, right? And dystrophy, uh, the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, that is extremely Becker's muscular dystrophy, DMD, BMD, very, very important with their clinical presentation. So muscle pathology, limit yourself to this. Okay, coming to endocrine, coming to endocrine, something that you've already discussed with me, Two days back, the pituitary tumor genetics. Okay, pituitary tumor genetics, number one. Something that we discussed day before yesterday, pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma genetics, the new table. I hope you remember the hereditary paraganglioma, succinate dehydrogenase. Do you remember the mnemonic that I gave you for the pheochromocytoma genetics, guys? I hope you all remember that, right? TENS. Remember, we made a mnemonic called tens so yes that is something you have to go through under diabetes for pathology kidney diabetic nephropathy very very important if you've not attended those sessions please they're available on youtube last four day sessions pick them up today itself finish them off the point is in the last 20 days if i'm telling you that you know cd markers are important don't think and put it in your list that i will read it someday no if i'm saying cd marker quiz is important pick it up today give it 15 minutes and finish it off if you've not seen the pituitary genetics and the pheochromocytoma genetics with me take out 15 minutes go to that lecture finish it off so don't delay don't delay things because now there's no time to Thyroid gland, thyroid gland tumors and FNSE. This was a question in the recent paper that came in 2020 of AIMS. What is the adequacy criteria of a thyroid FNSE? It is very important. Please go through it. Okay. Having discussed that, under breast, I've posted three tables of breast classification with targeted therapies and molecular classification. So you have to, have to see that. It's a must. It's a must. And under genitals, under genitals, please remember, not only genital tumors. So genital tumors you will study in surgery also, you will study it in uh, uh, gynae also. Images in pathology you all have to focus on. Very important. Okay. Next, the genetics. The genetics is important in these. Pap smear, I've already told you earlier, there's a video on YouTube that you have to know. And tumor markers. Tumor markers, I told you, under neoplasia also. So it's a must. Okay, so like Dr. Usha is saying, right, we can take that question. Okay, so can you tell me the adequacy criteria of thyroid FNSE? Can you tell me the adequacy criteria of thyroid FNSE, guys? The adequacy criteria for thyroid FNSE? Yes? Okay, perfect. So we should have how many follicles? How many follicles should we have? 
Okay, like Dr. Usha says, we should have six follicles. We should have six follicles. Yes, yes, perfect, perfect. Okay, let's move forward. Going on to something again that came in the uh, the recent AIMS exam, the prostate cancer. So this time they didn't ask you, you know, things about prostate cancer. They asked you the Gleason, which was very, very unexpected. So that is something you definitely have to know. Gleason scoring, Gleason grading. If you're having... a uh, Okay, so uh, if you're having a problem with Gleason scoring and grading, go in for again the YouTube session. I've explained it and I've taken a quiz also on Telegram. So by now, all those who've been following should be very well aware of it. Okay, having said that, coming to the hematology part, coming to hematology part, please remember we have RBC, WBC, platelets. RBC, WBC and platelets. So RBC, the all-time favorite iron metabolism iron metabolism right okay in iron metabolism you will come across dmt1 that is the transporter you will come across transferrin which is uh, with which uh, you know iron binds and gets transported in the blood so their disorders are important dmt1 mutation a transferinemia these are always important in the exam Coming on to the next, under hemolytic anemias, G6PD and PNH, you cannot leave. They are very, very, very important. Okay. Lastly, I don't know how many of you have read about this, but congenital dyserythropoietic anemia, CDA. Congenital dyserythropoietic anemia is something that is very important. CDA has three types, CDA 1, 2 and 3. CDA 1, 2 and 3 is very important and you have to know this for the paper. Okay, having done this, coming to WBCs. Leukemia lymphoma is something which troubles everyone. So please remember for leukemia lymphoma, the genetics is something all of you will focus on. The classification of AML, all time favorite with the stains, with the stains. That is also something that is very important. Uh, please give me, uh, just give me a moment, please. Yes, sorry. So uh, under leukemia lymphoma classification, the genetics is something which is very, very important. Apart from that, we have the classification, the AML classification that you all have to uh, have to know uh, the stains. Special stains in hematology. Special stains in hematology are utmost important, be it MPO, be it PASS, chloracetate esterase, and non-specific esterase. All of these you have to know. In the end, in the end, you have Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, the table, the different types, and the photos. Talking about platelets, running short of time, at least do these three things. Storage pool defects like Bernard Sulier, uh, Glanzman thrombasthenia, Gray platelet syndrome, and Hermansky Pudluck syndrome. Let's do a quick recap. Can you tell me Bernard Sulier syndrome is a defect in what? So I'm writing four syndromes, and all of you have to tell me their defects. So Bernard Sulier syndrome, Glanzman thrombasthenia, Glanzman thrombasthenia talking about gray platelet syndrome and talking about the hermansky pudluck syndrome yes a quick answer on all of these let's start one by one what is it gp 1b9 okay gp 1b9 for bernard sulier is what everyone is saying what about glanzman thrombasthenia okay i've got a lot of uh, mix ups out here so something that you've told me that I need to put up in your mock quiz and I need to discuss it with you. So good, a good Dr. Madhush Madhushri, GP1B9 for Bernard Sulier. What about Glanzman thrombasthenia? Glanzman thrombasthenia is GP2B3A. Perfect, GP2B3A. So please remember, everyone has a problem whether it is 1B9 or whether it is 2B3A. Remember, out of Bernard Sulier and Glanzman thrombasthenia, B comes first. 
B comes first. So the GP one B nine is for Bernard Soulier, and uh, G obviously comes later in the alphabet series. So GP two B three A is going to be later. So one B nine is for the first one that is Bernard Soulier. Gray platelet syndrome and Hermansky Pudlak syndrome are defects in the granules of platelets. No one's answered me on that as yes yet. No one's answered me on that as yet. So when I say gray platelet syndrome, it is alpha granule defect. The alpha granules of the platelet are defective, and when I say Hermansky Pudlak syndrome, the delta granules are defective. The delta granules are defective. Are we clear on that? So storage pool defects, please par lena. Very important. Platelet aggregometry chart interpretation. I would have not focused so much for the NEET PG, but for I N I C E T, it's a must. Platelet aggregometry chart. You have to know the interpretation of it. Have you all attended that lecture of mine? If not, please do. Please do. I will anyway be revising a lot of things in the coming month on an academy for the I N I C E T. So this is on top priority of my list as well. But please, if you have time, get back to that lecture and see it. If not, I will help you with the same in the coming month. And in the end, the different types of von Willebrand disease, type one, two, three, and under two, two A, two B, two M, two N, all those types von Willebrand you have to know. Are we okay with that? Should we move forward? So, uh, pretty much the end. So, what I want to tell you for those, if you want to spend, say, you know, you finished your course and you want to revise. Every day, start with this list. I'll be posting the PDF on the Telegram group for the list that I've given you right now. I'll be putting it up, and you can start seeing the special classes related to every list. So I'll give you the links also of all the special classes with every topic. If you want, you can see the special class on YouTube. I want everyone to follow Images Decoded. I always say that that is something very important. And lab diagnosis. There's a playlist of Images Decoded, which has all the images of the chapters. There's a playlist. of lab diagnosis which has immunohistochemistry electron microscopy immunofluorescence and flow cytometry these four i want everyone for the inicet exam you should know by heart you should know by heart right so this is something you cannot afford to go in the exam without reading this no you cannot so please remember that is what i wanted to share with you and now that's your 20 day game plan so uh, i know uh, when you sit down now when you open for example you sit down with pathology you open cell injury you know that cell injury is a 3 hour or a 2 hour chapter but first what will you read you will read the programmed cell deaths and you will read cellular aging and then you will read the rest of the topics as and what you get time in so this this particular chart should be on your study table and as you pick up every chapter you have to tick through these okay now what do you expect from these two mock tests so i'll be conducting them over telegram on november 11th and november 16th these will be the mock tests following which i'll be taking a an you know a live session where i'll discuss these two also in detail and all the topics i'll try my level best that all the topics that i have um, put up in this pdf today i am able to cover it with the help of mcqs so that you know as a whole we can revise pathology in say 100 to 120 questions of both these mock tests and then i hopefully we are well prepared for the inicet so these mock tests let me tell you are not going to be for your um, you know for knowing your rank or your analysis it is just to revise your pathology course well before the exam so because it is close to the exam i really want everyone to know that please don't take it as an assessment of whether you got good marks or bad marks if you get good marks great if you don't it is something that will help you revise your pathology from inicet point of view as a whole and i really recommend the neat pg students also to go through this because this will help them uh, know where in their preparation are they lacking up till now Okay, thank you so much. And November eleventh and November sixteenth, two mock tests coming up for you guys. So looking forward to a good discussion with all of you after this. And I hope we are able to cover all the topics that I've mentioned. And I hope all of you and get an amazing score and you are able to crack this exam despite all the po possible problems that have come up in this year. I just hope all of you come out as winners, right? So hope the session helped you. If you have any query, any doubt. last 20 days i'll try to help you as much as possible do write to me let me know if you want any session to be conducted any doubt anything that you you are facing a problem with so to uh, solve or to simplify and save your time you have um, 
uh, you have me so you can uh, definitely save your time by letting me know that you know this is something like platelet aggregometry i'm facing a lot of problem and i've been trying to understand it so don't waste one hour let me know i can include it in the session in the mock test and we can discuss it maybe in 10 minutes and save your time right so uh, make use of these mock tests i am preparing the mock tests right now i'm adding questions as you keep giving me your doubts i will add those questions and we can discuss them as well right thank you so much guys all the very best stay motivated keep studying you all have prepared very well very hard be very very alert and positive in these last 20 days make the best use of it thank you so much for joining in have a nice day